Hello. Welcome to worship this 16th Sunday after Pentecost. In advance, I have to apologize to you. I have tried everything possible to look directly into the camera on my device, and no matter which way I turn, it seems as though I'm looking off into the distance. So I'm sorry about that. For today, you'll just have to put up with it. Today, it's a beautiful day in Erie, Pennsylvania, where I'm at. Obviously, we're not at St. John's Lutheran Church. We are in uh, John Coleman's, or Pop's, uh, writing hut. You can see behind me a painting by Vincent Van Gogh. And, uh, well, we're just doing the best we can with what we got right now. I have sent emails out uh, letting you know that uh, we will not worship in person together for the uh, next two weeks. And so this very abbreviated service today is for um, September 12th. September 19th will probably unfold in some other way, but for right now, um, Andy, uh, Yos, and myself had to get something um, on tape, as it were, so that we could have a worship service for this Sunday. I won't go into the details of what let, led uh, church council to cancel worship uh, in person for this day, but um, I'll rely on the email that I sent out and the communication that's taken place uh, to do that. I have to say that, uh, it, you know, as I said again, this is a beautiful day here in Erie, Pennsylvania. And uh, wife Kathy is out in the yard uh, working on uh, her gardening stuff. But I have to tell you that uh, I would trade this particular day uh, to be with you in person on Sunday, September 12th. But that was not to be. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, through suffering and rejection you bring forth our salvation, and by the glory of the cross you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel we may turn from the lure of evil Take up our cross and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, 
and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will of Mark. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his di disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? 
Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this is a, an unusual sermon. We're uh, back to where we were some months ago, uh, and I'm sorry about that. I've been preaching a, a series of teaching sermons on the letter of James. Uh, we'll take a break from that and get back to it as best we can uh, in the uh, weeks ahead, I hope. What I would like to do is uh, share some thoughts about uh, a reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And I'm pretty sure that you uh, know this almost by heart. I am uh, taking the liberty of reading this from my, my, the Bible that my mother uh, inscribed to me in her impeccable handwriting. And this is the Revised Standard Version, so it may sound a little bit different than what you're used to, but Paul writes to the Corinthians, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and I deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecy, it will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. As for knowledge is imperfect, and our prophecy is imperfect. But when the perfect comes, the imperfect will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall understand fully, even as I have been fully understand, stood. So faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Well, this is one of the hazards of live television. <laughs> Not only uh, have I booted a line or two in that beloved reading, but you heard uh, Cole and Killian uh, shouting about the backyard, and you might have heard a bark or two from our foxhound Sherlock Holmes. Uh, it's all part of the, the fabric of uh, these days, I guess. But I wanted to share this reading from... 1 Corinthians because, um, well, Paul was writing to the church in the city of Corinth, and those folks in that church were not getting along. They were not behaving as Paul hoped they would have. They were not, um, they were not adhering to the faith as Paul had taught them. So that's the context of this letter to the Corinthians, and this is the context of Paul's, it's almost like a song about love. I am glad to say, uh, I am glad to observe that this is not our context at St. John's. Uh, but these words which 
they can almost they can almost seem a little idealistic or trite sometimes. They're so perfect, aren't they? Oh, we need to be patient, we need to be kind, can't be irritable. I mean these these are these are heights we can never reach, let's face it. And yet, uh, for me, as I think about how I want to live this life, uh, and how as a pastor I would counsel all of us to try to live this life, that um, it's our blueprint. Paul's love poem um, from 1 Corinthians is our, uh, our way. And it's our way, I would say, especially at this time. You're watching Pastor John give a sermon on YouTube. Again! And you know what? We're tired, right? We're sick and tired. And I dare say we might even be just a little bit grouchy. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of it. But I'll tell you what, I know it myself because I've been a little bit grouchy. I've just about had it. I'm done. I'm done with COVID. I'm done with not being able to, to just be about our business in the way that we're used to. It's, a, it's just a big pain in the tuchus. <laughs> but... However, we might feel right now, and uh, however we might want to speak, there's something that is the most important thing about us. The most important thing about us right now, even if we want to fly off the handle, if we want to uh, uh, grab somebody by the throat and shake them, the most important thing about all of us at St. John's is that we are Christians. Christians. We follow Jesus as best we can. And I don't know anybody who would argue with me um, when I say that Paul expresses how Christians should try to live together the kind of community we should try to be. And it's important to know that the love that Paul talks about, you know, how did that go again? So faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The love that Paul is talking about isn't our love. We can't do it. Instead, this is love that has been planted within us. It's the love of God. And so while we can't love this way on our own, we know that God gives us this love within ourselves. And this is our way of life. However much we may disagree, however much we might be fed up with the fact that, oh my gosh, here we go again, we're not in church. But the most important thing about us right now is that we are Christians. And at this point, I think it might be useful to have a little bit of perspective. These are, these are difficult times, right? But uh, a few years ago, I, and I've mentioned this before in sermons, I started wearing a bracelet. And the bracelet says uh, Mark E. Snell, uh, 3rd of September, 68, uh, South Vietnam. He was, a <clears throat> well, he was 18 when he passed in Vietnam victim of war, soldier. I remember the day in our old neighborhood when the word came that Mark Snell died. Um, we are not 
at war right now. The bombs aren't falling on us, although we do have military casualties. It's not like it was when we were uh, at war in Vietnam or Korea or World War II, World War I, the war to end all wars. That chance, right? We're not dealing with that right now. At the same time, it is bad enough, isn't it? It's tough right now. Uh, this, this pandemic has robbed people of health and it's uh, robbed loved ones of um, life. There's plenty of suffering and this suffering uh, when it seemed to have abated for a while maybe it well, now it seems to have come back and it's interfered with our life together and nobody has to like it but I return to this teaching from Paul's letter to the Corinthians that says above all no matter what might be going on, no matter how frustrated we might be, no matter the extent to which we might disagree with each other, we are a community of love. And as tough as things might seem, I would encourage us all to remember that we are Christians that God is with us. And in uh, words that are popular these days, as Christians and as followers of Jesus, we got this. We got this. So let's stick together, love each other, and trust that God is with us and leading us, even in times when it seems like God is not. Amen. people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Lord, we pray for our world. We pray that you would bring calm where there is anxiety. 
that you would bring hope where there is despair, that you would bring gentleness where there is violence. We pray, Lord, as well for our country, the United States of America, that where we disagree, that you would bring a spirit of reconciliation, that where there's upset, you would bring patience, that where there is uh, discord, turmoil, that you would bring the love that Paul preaches of in his letter to the Corinthians. We pray, Lord, for St. John's Lutheran Church in our humble Onion Town, Pennsylvania. We lift up to you uh, Carol and Bob Weary and the whole Weary family as they try to recover from the COVID-19 virus. We add uh, to their names, Lord, names I suppose are known mostly to you, that you would bring healing and the peace that passes all understanding. And we are bold to ask, Lord, that you would help all of us to see the, the beauty of these late summer days that we could appreciate all of your blessings as they surround us. Lord, we thank you for the saints, those who have gone before us and have shown us, according to your will, how best we can live in love. We intercede for them, that you would hold them in your loving arms until that day when we can all be together again, looking into your face and knowing the beauty of your love. In these words, Lord, please accept all for whom we pray. In your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Please share that peace in your homes where you are right now. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
Yeah.